Seven years have gone. It can no longer be left undone. The candle must burn again and pain must follow the unholy flame. So burn, burn and free the spirit from its chain. Hey, what's up, YouTubers, and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts collection overview video. And if you can tell me where that quote came from, you will earn some cool points from Todd E. Walnuts, even if you have to Google it. Some of you probably know it. If you do, leave a comment down below. Today we're going to go over, or tonight, uh, rather, we're going to go through my Vinegar Syndrome collection. And this is the shelving unit that I have with all of the Vinegar Syndrome titles that I own on it. Most of these are Blu-rays. I have a little section down here below that's some DVDs and some Blu-rays without box uh, slip covers. And uh, we'll just kind of go through from the top. These are alphabetized. I have a couple candles lit. The pups are here with me. They're laying on the couch. This is only gonna be for the video. I would not recommend leaving candles or any kind of a heat source near your discs because it's just not a good idea. I'm only going to be doing this briefly for this video, so let's check out the top shelf. It's a pretty good mixture, though. I have, I think this is warm apple pie, and this one I believe is vanilla, so it has a really nice little, it smells like a bakery in here. <laughs> All right, so the first one from shelf one is called All American Murder. It's a slasher whodunit, uh, Christopher Walken in it. I think this was from the early 90s. It was pretty good. The next one is the Amityville Horror 4K, classic from the 70s, late 70s. Everybody knows this movie. It's really, really good. And there's a box set here. This is the Amityville Cursed collection which comes with some of the sequels uh, Amityville Horror The Evil Escapes Amityville 1992 It's About Time Amityville A New Generation and Amityville Dollhouse nice little box set then we have the Angel Trilogy Angel, Avenging Angel, and the third and final one was Angel, the Final Chapter. And the next one is another nice little box set called the Apocalypse Tetralogy. A little four movie set. I will take that in the other room at the end and I'll take some of these box sets and we'll open them up at the end so you can see what's in some of those. Go a little more in depth. Next one's a, a black comedy, uh, Auntie Lee's Meat Pies. Here's a little twofer. You get two movies in one set. You get Battle for the Lost Planet and Mutant War. Now, I don't remember if it was two movies or if that was the alternate title. We'll go through that one at the end as well. And this one, it's the same movie. It just has a different slipcover. So you get Battle for the Lost Planet and Mutant War. I'll put these kind of side by side here so you can see them. So these are the two covers for Mutant War. And those are the two covers for Battle for the Lost Planet. The next one is called The Beastmaster. This is a really beautiful set. This is the 4K edition of The Beastmaster. I'll take this one in the other room and we'll go through it. I know most of you have these already, but just in case there's somebody who hasn't seen these before, 
probably be nice to see what's inside of these. Next one's called The Bees, starring John Saxon. These slip covers are beautiful. Next one's called Berserker. This was pretty good. I, I like these kind of movies. Some people probably think these suck. I, I enjoyed Berserker. Next one's called Best Friends. Kind of a hippie sex romp. Another kind of a revenge type movie from the, I think it was late 60s, might have been early 70s for that one. Here's a killer kids movie called Beware Children at Play. Next one's called Beware My Brethren. And of course, uh, I hope you guys have a pencil and a piece of paper and taking notes for some of the you know, releases that you wanna add to your collection. And of course, if you see anything that I'm missing that I need to add, just go ahead and let me know. I do have a list of movies I want and some box sets that I want still that I'll be getting. But if you want to, you know, suggest anything, let me know. The next one is called Beyond the Door 3. What does that say? says the prince of darkness is about to choose his bride next one here's a pretty nice release big thick box set for a blade in the dark I know this one sold out pretty quick on the vinegar syndrome website and this is kind of a unique box set where it opens up kind of diagonally I'll take that in the other room and we'll go through that one at the end of the video Next one's called Blades. This is kind of a horror comedy about a killer uh, lawnmower at a golf resort. Kind of a trauma type movie. I don't remember if it is trauma, but it, it's something that trauma would definitely put out. Just when you thought it was safe to putt. Next one's called Blood Beat. Excellent cover. So this one came out in 1982. It is all region. You can see some of the some of kind of the hokey special effects that they use with the different lighting and stuff. But these these old 80s horror movies were great. And then they re-released it a couple of years later with kind of a this comic book style cover. I couldn't resist it. I don't I don't really like this cover. I just couldn't resist getting it to collect it. I mean that, that cover right there is so much better, but that one sold out. So that is Blood Beat from 1982. The next one is called Blood Delirium. That is awesome. It's fun going through these again. Um, it's almost like seeing them for the first time. I kind of, for, you know, you get so many, so many movies in your collection. I know a lot of you guys are like me and you get a lot of movies every day, every week. You're constantly getting packages in the mail. It's kind of good to go through your existing collection and kind of reappreciate them, I guess. The next one's called Blood Games. Another kind of a revenge type movie. It's pretty good. It was okay. It was not. It was not great, but it wasn't bad. It was somewhere in the middle. It was. It was fun. This one's called Blood Hook, and this one took place. Uh, I think this was filmed in my state, the great state of Wisconsin, where the Walnuts Compound is. Let's see if it mentions on the back. I believe it does. Um, 
I thought it mentioned it. I don't really want to waste too much time looking for this. I do believe, though, that this was filmed in the great state of Wisconsin. Next one is another kind of a, a B movie for sure, but it's kind of a comedy horror called Blood Suckers from Outer Space. different. Next one's called Blood Theater. And this one, it has two movies on it. So you have Blood Theater and The Visitants. And Blood Theater came out in 1984 and The Visitants came out in 1987. And they kind of combine the movies or they run them back to back like you would see at a drive-in. It's pretty well done. I like the idea of that. I miss the drive-in days. I hope they bring them back at some point, even if it's just kind of, kind of for a novelty. Next one's called Bloody New Year. Vengeance. Haven't watched all of these yet. Some of them I need to watch pretty soon. This is one of them. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing to focus. This one came out in 1989. You can see there that they always have a lot of really nice bonus features. And Vinegar Syndrome, they really, um, they really go all out with the quality. The um, picture quality, the sound quality, bonus materials that you get, the packaging that you get, everything is really, really nice. Next one is called Blood Harvest, starring Tiny Tim, the musician. I guess you can call him a musician. He wasn't any more of a musician than he was an actor, I guess, but he he seemed to have a, a following. And um, I think he pretty much, he was kind of the Weird Al before Weird Al, I guess. I didn't really think he was very entertaining. I didn't really care for that movie and I hated Tiptoe, tiptoe Through the Tulips. I, I can't stand that. Next one's called Body Melt. This one sold out pretty quick, and uh, it's probably pretty expensive now if you didn't get it. You'll notice, too, that I have a lot of these. Most of these are covered with these um, protective cases, and I, I recommend that because, you know, we spend a lot of money on our collection, and we want to keep them pristine as, as much as we can for as long as we can. This one's called The Boogeyman. And you can get those cases just about anywhere now. There's probably a dozen, maybe a couple dozen sellers on eBay. You can even buy them on Amazon. You can just type them in Google and somebody has them for sale somewhere. So they're a little bit ex expensive, but I think they're becoming more and more affordable. But it's definitely a must for me to uh, protect these slip covers. This one's called Boggy Creek 2. This is a beautiful edition. I like these movies. I, I like Boggy Creek 1 and 2. This one was limited to 4,000. I got number 2831. I think this one's sold out now, or it has been for a while now, I think, actually. Next one's called Buried Alive. in The Caller. 
It's kind of a horror movie, more of a suspense drama. Stalker type. Stalker type movie. These are fun movies. And Madeline Smith, is that her name? Let's see. Madeline Smith, I thought she was uh, very cute, very attractive. The next one is the Cardona Collection number one. I have the Cardona Collection number two on my wish list. I'll be getting that soon. Don't have it as of yet, but these are fun movies. Comes in this nice slipcase here. You get Treasure of the Amazon, uh, Triangle, the Bermuda Mystery, and Cyclone. fun movies. Here's an older movie. I think this was from the 40s. This was called The Cat Creeps. It's a universal picture. Okay, let's take a look and see if it says what year this came out. Actually, I'm not going to... I'll pause it here and I'll let you know. I don't want to waste too much time doing that. So it came out in 1946. It's 58 minutes running time. It's black and white. I love those kind of movies. When I was a kid, I didn't really like black and white, but as I've gotten older, I really do appreciate the black and white cinema. This one's called The Cellar. And this one is the Spanish horror. I think it's, it's called Cemetery of Terror, I believe. I'm gonna double check. Um, May have been something different than that though but check out this cover man look at that that is beautiful i'm gonna pause it and uh, we'll take that out so this is what the inside looks like still with the spanish title and on the back this one came out in 1985 it's 91 minutes running time. I I thought this one was in Spanish language with English subtitles, but it looks like it's in English language. This was directed by Ruben Galindo Jr., who also did Don't Panic and Grave Robbers. Cemetery of Terror. I'll show you guys the inside of this one too. So there's the disc art. And under the disc is the reversible cover in English. It just says Cemetery of Terror. But this is a really nice addition. This is beautiful. So that's what they look like side by side. Okay, two more here for this top shelf. And the next one is called Sensor. This is a pretty cool set too. This one was limited. Where's the, I thought this was limited. Let me pause it for a second. I'm gonna take the slip cover out because this is, this is a pretty cool set. Okay, so if I remember correctly, and it's been a few years since I watched this, but this is the title of the movie, Sensor. It comes in this really nice, sturdy outer shell. We looked at that already. And then you get the slipcover on the inside. This is the movie again. And it came out in 2021. And it's 84 minutes running time. It is locked to region A, but in, during the movie, in the in the um, in the movie itself, there's another movie called Asunder that they're playing in the movie. I know that doesn't really make sense. I'm not explaining it that well. Um, and Beast Man. So these are kind of fictional movies that are playing within the movie, if that makes sense. And I'm going to have to give this another rewatch because I don't really. I'm a little confused right now. But I did watch this once before a couple of years ago, and I, I'm kind of drawing a blank on it. But that's a pretty sweet set though right there and the last one for shelf one is called the children it's another creepy killer kids movie 
which uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of killer kids movies, to be honest with you. Although I will say Children of the Corn, the original one from 1984 was excellent. But uh, so that is the end of shelf one. Kind of give it a little panning here and then we'll go down to shelf two. And the first one here is a, this is an excellent Christmas horror movie. Christmas Evil, I really like this. I watch it every year. This is one of the better ones and this is a really nice slip cover. I think this came out in 1983-ish, something like that. The next one is a nice little box set called Cloak and Dagger. This is kind of an homage to 80s gaming. This is a, a big time pop culture reference for this movie. You know, there's a lot of references in this movie for the 80s. And uh, I think this is one I'll take in the other room too and we'll go through that one in a little more detail. The next one is called The Corruption of Chris Miller. I went into this with absolutely no expectations. I didn't know anything about this movie. And it's a pretty good Italian slasher. It's um, it's not quite, I wouldn't consider it a giallo, although, I mean, it's an Italian slasher, but it doesn't have like the, you know, the, um, the, the unknown killer with the black gloves and the shadows and all that stuff. It doesn't really have all the elements of a giallo, but this was a pretty good movie. It was pretty brutal. And there's uh, some pretty good scenery in it. I believe it was shot in Italy. It was either Italy or Spain, but it has really beautiful landscape. There's uh, really good photography in that movie. Next one's called Count Dracula's Great Love. And I'll be honest, I only bought this one because it was on sale. And this was a, a pretty slow seller for Vinegar Syndrome. Usually they have uh, these slipcover editions. They, they sell out pretty quick or fairly quick. But this one dragged on for a long time with the slipcover. And I was like, you know what, I'll just grab it. Why not? Next one is called Creature. Kind of a sci-fi alien horror movie. It's been sleeping peacefully on a moon of Saturn for 2,000 centuries until now. Cthulhu Mansion or Cthulhu, Cthulhu, however you want to pronounce it. I've heard many different pronunciations of that name and I'm not even going to try to wrap my head around the real pronunciation. I just call it Cthulhu. I know it's wrong, but that's what it is for me. So. Next one's called Curfew. In by 10, dead by 12. This time you shouldn't come home. Haven't watched this one yet. Here's one I recently got uh, a couple months ago. Curse of the Screaming Dead. This one also has an alternate title. Hold on one second. So the alternate title, actually this is the original title. This is the title I knew it as. I have this in a couple different box sets. And uh, I remember renting this on VHS years ago. Curse of the Cannibal Confederates. And this must be the alternate title because I never knew it under that title. But this is a really nice addition here. It's a two disc set. This came out in 1981, and it looks like, hold on a second, looks like there's another bonus movie on here. Um, so Blu-ray disc number one contains the 89 minute feature, The Curse of the Screaming Dead from 1982. It also contains the 73 minute feature film Night of Horror, 1981, both restored in 2K. So you get two movies for one. I believe this one is still available with the slipcover too. So if you guys are interested, I would go and grab that now before these go out of print. And uh, I know usually when I 
when I record these videos, they they tend to uh, sell a lot of stuff. Uh, people kind of take notes. I'm not saying that I'm I'm shilling for vinegar syndrome. I'm just sharing my passion of movies with you guys, giving you ideas, and then people go and pick some of these up. So um, I'm not saying I have any pull or anything like that, but you may want to go and grab this before it's too late. So this next movie has five different covers. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five. So this is called Cutting Class. And this is one of the first movies that Brad Pitt was in. And it's an 80s slasher movie. And it, it's the same exact movie, but it has five different covers. So I'm going to show you all five of these. You can let me know which one you like the best out of the five. I'll tell you which one I like the best once I get all five of them up here. Um, these are all well sold out by now, but so here's the five. Get the uh, pickaxe to the forehead, Get the skull without the skull cap. This one here was my least favorite with the hand and the spilled popcorn and soda, whatever that is. This one's kind of a plain Jane. And this one here. And I think my favorite would be this one here with the skull, and then probably that one, um, and then probably that one. These two right here to me were just kind of meh. It's a pretty good movie though. Jill Sholin's also in it. She was in Popcorn and other movies. But that is cutting class and those are the five covers. Okay, where were we here? Dark Room is next. This is one I have not watched yet, so if anybody has seen it and they want to talk a little bit about it, go ahead and leave a comment. Just please, no spoilers. And this one's called Dark Tower. This one was pretty good. Michael Moriarty is in here, and uh, um, James Hong is in here, and James Hong is an aging man, and he has to keep drinking a serum to make himself younger. It's pretty good. It's a sci-fi horror movie. Next one's called The Dead Come Home. Also known as The House on Tombstone Hill. Very, very low budget movie. I was, uh, I mean, that title sounds awesome. The House on Tombstone Hill. I was a little bit disappointed with that one. But this one... Not only is this one of my favorite Vinegar Syndrome releases, but this is one of my best, my favorite movies of all time. This is Dead Heat. This is the 4K edition. This is a great cop buddy movie. And you got uh, Joe Piscopo there on the right. You got Treat Williams on the left. And uh, Treat Williams just uh, recently passed away about a year or less ago. I'm, he was, a, he was a great actor, and this is a really good movie. If you haven't watched Dead Heat, definitely check that out. You'll love it. Next one's called Deadly Daphne's Revenge. I believe this is a trauma movie. It is. And this one came out in 1981. It's all region. Next one is called Deadly Games, Dial Code Santa Claus. I have not watched this one yet. This is the 4K edition. I know a lot of people have recommended this movie, and I, I do plan on checking it out pretty soon, but I always find something else to watch. But I'll definitely put this in at some point. It's a pretty cool cover, too. Next one is, I believe this is also a trauma movie. This is called Dear Dead Delilah. And the next one is called Death Promise. Kind of an 80s action. Shoot him up. Uh, 
This one's a really nice release of Death Wish 2. I would really love to see a Death Wish box set in 4K. This is 4K, I believe. But I would like to see all of them released uncut on 4K. Next one's called Demonoid. Not really much going on in the back there. This one's pretty new to my collection. This is called the Demon Rat. And this one was limited to 3,000. I got number 1799. This one's called Devil's Story. I think this is a French horror movie. I haven't watched that one. This one I did watch. This is called Demon Wind. This is a pretty cool lenticular cover. The demon kind of opening up the window and breaking through. This was a pretty good 80s creature feature with uh, really good practical effects. You got the, the demon in the rubber suit and all that stuff and the fake blood by the buckets full. This was a good movie. It was a fun movie, 1984. This one's called Disconnected. Another kind of a stalking type harassing suspense movie nineteen eighty four I would have guessed late seventies but I would have been wrong all region next one's called Dolly Dearest Here's another twin bill. This is called the Doll Squad. And Mission Kill Fast. This one's called Dominique. Dominique is dead, or is she? another suspense kind of a stalker type movie don't answer the phone here's one that I really enjoy don't go in the woods James Bryant. There's some pretty good bonus materials on here. And there's a, a couple of interviews with director James Bryant. And there's a guy also who collected, uh, her, who kept some of the props from this movie. And you can see them, that he still has them. He's collected them or he wants to keep them or whatever. And you can see them in the bonus features. It was pretty interesting. But this is a really cool slipcover too, and I really like this movie. This one's called Don't Open Till Christmas. I believe this is a Spanish slasher. Spanish. Here's a, I don't remember the alternate title, so I'm going to have to take this one out. I'll, I'll do that. It says Dimensiones Occultas. 
I'm going to pause it and I'll take it out really quick. So that's the Spanish cover again. And this is the alternate title, Don't Panic. Let's see if we can. This one came out in 1987. It is all region. So that photo there, let's see if we can get a good little comparison here because it looks like that image is supposed to be that image. So that is Don't Panic or Dimensiones Occultus. Okay, so moving right along, we're up to double exposure. I, I know this was released by Scorpion releasing on DVD, but uh, Vinegar Syndrome gave it a nice clean upgrade there on Blu-ray. Next one is called Dr. Jekyll's Dungeon of Death. I really wanted to like this one. I, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. It was, uh, I mean, the title sounds awesome. I love those kind of uh, man the haunted mansion or creepy mansion type movies. And a lot of the filming techniques in this movie were very dark. A lot of the a lot of the scenes were almost too dark to see what was going on. Um, I still thought it was a pretty decent movie, but it wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination. And looks like this one was limited to 3000. I got number 20 or 2085. But I mean, that sure is an awesome title. I'll pull you in. Dr. Jekyll's Dungeon of Death. I should watch that again just to give it another kind of a rewatch. The next one, I had no idea what this was when I bought it. This one was also on sale. I believe this is an adult movie with a horror theme to it. And I, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I think it's Dragoos. I don't know. I uh, haven't watched it yet, but I do believe that this is a, it may even be a double feature, I don't know. So I'm just going to keep moving. I didn't know what I was getting into when I bought that. Here's a cover for you, Ebola Syndrome. This type of movie has been done a million times, but I always enjoy the you know, the outbreak type movies. There's a, there's a pandemic and people start turning into monsters or zombies or flesh eating, you know, maniacs. It's just another one of those type of movies. This one's called The Eleventh Commandment. Still haven't watched this one yet. Next one is called Evil Town. This one was limited. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Um, 2500, I got number 1481. This one's called Evils of the Night. Look at that. Almost looks like the Millennium Falcon. Alien vampires have just landed from outer space in search for the one substance they need to survive. Teenage blood. And the last two are the same movie, just two different slipcovers. And this is a pretty cool movie. I remember watching this on VHS back in the day. It's called Fade to Black, and it's about this guy here on the cover that he's a, a film fan. He loves horror movies, and he studies them and watches them all the time. And then he actually starts turning into 
some of the maniacs that he, I guess, kind of looks up to on the silver screen or on the big screen. So this is a pretty good movie. I would recommend you guys checking this out if you haven't seen it yet. There's a lot of kind of um, Easter eggs in this movie. You'll see a lot of different little nods and winks to some of the horror movies of yesteryear, I guess. But these are, it's the same movie, just two different covers. People used to laugh at Eric Binford. Now with every performance, he knocks them dead. It's pretty cool because he works in an old movie theater too and he has these old reel-to-reel uh, -reel movies that he puts in, these in those old canisters. I really enjoyed this, it's, it's a good movie. So that concludes shelf two. And we're jumping straight into shelf three here. I kind of gave myself a little extra wiggle room here. So the first one on shelf three is the fear. These uh, kind of tree people. Got a creature feature, kind of a monster movie type deal. Wooden monsters. Next one's called Flesh and Fantasy. another old one. I think that's a black and white one. Let me pause it for a minute. I think this was from the 30s. Oh, this was from 1943. Flesh and Fantasy. That's what the reverse cover looks like. Very young Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson. Nineteen forty-three, ninety-four 94 minutes running time. Region A locked. It's a trilogy of tales of love and death. Kind of like a anthology type movie. Okay, the next one here is a really good movie too. I know a lot of you guys know about this one. This is called Flesh Eater, Revenge of the Living Dead. A movie by Bill Heinzman there, who was the original graveyard zombie in the 1968 Night of the Living Dead movie. And he directed this, and it's very much, I guess, kind of a tribute to the 1968 classic. This was very well done. I thought this movie was excellent. And I'm, I'm glad I own this edition. This is a really beautiful piece right there to my collection. Here's some more silliness. Flesh-eating mothers. Now these are five of my favorite box sets in my entire collection. I really love these. I think Vinegar Syndrome's doing a great job with these Forgotten Gialli box sets. And I do know that there's a, a sixth set out right now that I'm gonna be getting, I just didn't get it yet. But you have volume one that has trauma, police are blundering in the dark, the killer is one of 13, Volume two, you get Girl in Room 2A, My Dear Killer, and the French Sex Murders. Volume three, you get Autopsy, Murder Mansion, and Crazy Desires of a Murderer. Volume four, you get Arabella, the Black Angel, the sister of Ursula, and the killer is still among us. And volume five, you get White Dress of Mariale, Tropic of Cancer, and Nine Guests for a Crime. If you don't have any of these, I recommend getting them. These are excellent. I'm not going to pull them out of the box. I have done unboxings of these sets on my channel. Um, but I definitely recommend. These are excellent. These are really, really good. And so we're going to keep moving. The next one's called Frightmare. If I went through all those boxes, this video would probably be two hours long. I don't want to do that. Nobody would watch probably past the first 25, 30 minutes. So on my... YouTube analytics page, people watch on average about 14 minutes of my videos, that's it. So if I make a, a video that's an hour long, it means people are watching 14 minutes, they're not watching the whole thing. So I'm not gonna sit and make a two hour movie, nobody's gonna watch it. So anyway, that's Frightmare. 
Next one's called Girls School Screamers. This was pretty good. There were some pretty good kills in here. I like the kind of sorority house killers, college campus killer movies. I like this one a lot. I thought it was pretty good. I had never seen it before Vinegar Syndrome put it out. Next one's called Graduation Day. Class of 1981. Again, another kind of a high school or college campus slasher movie. Those are fun. Grandmother's House. I used to have this on a bootleg DVD for years because it never had a DVD release. It had a, a VHS release, but it never had a DVD and certainly not a Blu-ray, but Vinegar Syndrome put this out. It's a beautiful set. This is really good. That's one of their best releases, I think. Next one is another Spanish horror movie. I'm gonna have to take it out because I don't remember. Obviously it started with a G because it's in the G's. I think it is the graveyard or something, but we'll take it out here and uh, take a look. So here's the slip cover again. I wanna make sure we go over that. Okay, that's beautiful. It reminds me of kind of the tombs of the blind dead, the Knights Templar. And then here's the inside artwork. And the American title for the Spanish movie is called Grave Robbers. You can see it there on the disc. And this one came out in 1989. All region. There's not a whole lot of bonus features, but uh, probably didn't have very much to go on with this movie. These, these movies are pretty rare, so there's probably not of a lot of existing uh, bonus materials for these. So I'm really glad to have this. I, I think this is a really awesome set here. I want to kind of show you guys why it's important to protect your movies, whether it be like one of those plastic baggies or one of these thicker cases. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Let me see. But if you look at all those little lines of scratches, and I, I take really, really good care of my stuff. And I don't really handle my movies that often. But you can see all those little lines of scratches that are on the plastic case. Those would be rubbing against your artwork on your slipcovers over time. And be taking off some of the print, some of the color, and eventually you're gonna have scuffs and dings and dents. So it's, uh, it's very, very important to uh, protect your stuff. The next one is called Grave Secrets. Unless you just don't care if your movies get messed up, but I don't know why you would spend that kind of money and uh, not wanna have nice stuff. Uh, this one was limited to 4,000. See if we can get that to kind of show. 4,000, I got number 1867. Check out that cover. That's the back cover. Those milky white eyes are creepy. Grave Robbers. And this one, this one came out in 1988. Here's Hard Rock Zombies and Slaughterhouse Rock. If you like your 80s horror movies with some period piece music, some, some heavy metal from the 80s, hard rock from the 80s, these movies are pretty fun. Nice little drive-in style double bill there. I like this one a lot. This is called The Hearse. It's a haunted house movie, believe it or not, even though it's, even though it's called The Hearse. It's a, it's a haunted house house movie it's also a haunted car movie but there's more it's deeper than that uh this one had trish vandeveer in it there she is right there i thought she was really she was really cute in this movie and uh joseph cotton was also in the movie as well and i really enjoyed this movie it came out in 1980 this was really good 
If you like haunted house movies from the 80s, you'll, you'll enjoy that one. Here's a, this one has achieved cult classic or cult status over the years. This is a Hell Comes to Frogtown, starring Rowdy, Roddy Piper. And uh, this is another nice addition. Has kind of a unique way of opening up. Maybe I'll take this one in the other room and we'll go through that one too at the end. And then they re-released it a couple years ago with this alternate cover. I had to get it. Everybody knows about Hell Comes to Frog Town by now. Next one's called Hell Master. And to me, this one was kind of a um, Hellraiser type. Not really a ripoff. I mean, they didn't go directly and copy it. You know, I mean, it, it was close enough to me where it felt like it was kind of a Hellraiser clone. Next one's called Hell Riders. This is another one that was limited. Let's see, it got a little dust on there. Uh, this one was limited to 3,000. I got number 2440. Uh, this one is an Umberto Lenzi movie, and I like Lenzi. I like his movies. This is called Hitcher in the Dark, but I thought this one fell short. I was pretty disappointed, to be honest with you. It, it felt like it was more of a soap opera type movie. I, I didn't really care too much for it. But with that said, I only watched it once. Maybe I should watch it again. And maybe it, it'll grow on me. I don't know. But I, I remember from the one viewing I gave it, it just wasn't my kind of movie. This one's called Hobgoblins. And this was kind of a take on Critters or Gremlins type movie. Little These little creatures here. It's a pretty fun movie. But they were definitely trying to cash in on the success of Gremlins. That's a pretty cool cover, though. So you can see how they almost kind of look like... They almost look like a mix between Gremlins and Critters. Pretty cool cover, though. I like that. Here's one that's kind of a time capsule this is called hollywood horror house uh the movie itself is not very good um i would probably on a scale of one to ten i'd give this maybe a four but there's a lot of old school hollywood that you get to see in this movie um the one biggest thing that jumped out at me was the hollywood sign how it was in such disrepair it was rusty there was panels of the of the sign that were kind of swinging in the wind and this movie took place I think it was like in the early 70s so that was only like you know 50 something years ago uh, now the Hollywood sign is like a national treasure and they take you know it's it's protected by security and police and helicopters and all that stuff people can't go up there and um, but back then, they just didn't really care about it. They kind of just let it, it was almost like it was rotting away. And you could see that in that movie. Uh, the next two are box sets called Homegrown Horrors. I got volume one and two. I, I'm going to keep buying these as well. I think these are great. So you get, for volume one, you get Fatal Exam, Beyond Dreams Door, and Winter Beast. And for volume two, you get Hanging Heart. Moonstalker and Dead Girls. So I don't know if they have a volume three yet. Uh, it's possible they do. I'd have to check unless somebody wants to comment down below. But I'm going to continue to buy those. I think those are great. Uh, the next one here is called Horror High. And Stanley, you get a, a, a double bill here. What does that say at the top? I was trying to read it through my phone. It says, caution, persons suffering from herpetophil, I don't know, fear of snakes should consult their physician before attending. In Horror High, I believe this is a, it's a British high school slasher movie. 
I remember liking it. I thought it was pretty good. Next one's called Hot Snake. This is a Western movie, a Spanish. I believe this is a Spanish Western. And it also has Guns and Guts. Rene Cardona Jr. And Fernando Duran Rojas. I believe those are both Spanish horror movies. Uh, Spanish Western movies. And the last one for shelf three is called The House of the Dead. This is a case where the cover is better than the movie, in my opinion. Check this out. And this one, look at how cheesy this movie is. You know, I remember now watching this, I got like maybe a third of the way in and I turned it off. <laughs> I, I definitely have to go back and watch it again. 1978. I thought it was uh, pretty terrible. But I'm going to go back and give it another viewing and watch the whole thing through. So that will conclude Shelf 3. I'm going to move these candles a little bit. We're going to keep going. We're not quite halfway done yet. I've been doing too much talking, I think. But you guys want to hear a little bit about these movies, I would I would hope. When I watch, you know, uh, collection overview videos, I want to hear people's thoughts on the movie. It might kind of sway me whether to buy it or not. So hopefully I'm, I'm kind of giving you guys some info in, in that same way, too. So the first one for shelf four is called The House of Usher. And a little, little dusty here. Uh, let's see. This one is limited to 4,000. Can you see that? I got number 1855. Also, I need to know about the sound. How does the sound, how is it coming out in the video? Because I'm still getting people complaining that it's, it's too soft. The voice is too soft. So you guys have to let me know what the quality of the uh, audio sounds like in these videos. Next one's called Ice Cream Man. Starring Clint Howard. This is a classic. This is, has a cult following now. David Naughton in that uh, prop right there. Somebody still owns that. That thing still is still kicking around. I, I don't remember where, but I saw a YouTube video that somebody owns that in their collection. That David Naughton in a uh, waffle cone. It's pretty funny. Movie from 1994. Next one's called The Immortalizer. Uh, I think this one tried to kind of kind of imitate um, the Reanimator movies, but it wasn't as good. It wasn't exactly like the Reanimator movies. It was close though. Next one's called Incubus. Sci-fi horror. In the Cold of the Night. I know people have recommended this to me. I've had this in my collection probably for at least a, a few years now, and I still have not watched this one yet. This has, uh, it, it's a Nico Masterakis movie, which I told you guys several times that I'm a big fan. This one has Brian Thompson, Shannon Tweed, David Soule, who just passed away recently um, from Starsky and Hutch. Uh, Mark Singer is in here, who was the Beast Master. So there's a, it's a great director and it's a good cast. I don't know why I haven't watched that one yet. Here's one that's going to get me demonetized, but I, I don't do this for the money. I do this for a hobby. This one's called The Infernal Rapist. It's one of the words that you can't use. I think I got demonetized earlier anyways when I said cannibal. That's another word you can't use. Here's a, a case where the uh, slipcover is better than the movie. Jack Frost. That is a beautiful slipcover, that lenticular. The movie's pretty fun, but it's not great. Next one's called Killer's Delight, a slasher movie. Five Girls This Week, How Many Next Week? Serial Killer Slasher movie. Here's, uh, I believe this is Zombie, it's either Zombie 4 or Zombie 5, Killing Birds. But uh, birds are trans, trans uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're transmitting. Does that make sense? I don't know if that's the right word, but these birds are causing uh, a pandemic, turning people into flesh-eating zombies. 
killer birds. This one's called the killing kind. Here's one. I thought this was a pretty fun movie, but this cover is unbelievable. Look at that. The movie was pretty good too, but I would love to have a full-size poster of that image right there. All right, where are we here? I'm gonna go get something to drink after this one. This one's called Last Gasp. I think this is another serial killer movie. I'm going to pause it here for a minute, guys, and then we will continue off on The Laughing Dead. I'll be right back. Okay, so about 15 minutes passed for me, but we're right back at it with you. You guys didn't miss any time. Next one's called The Laughing Dead. Thousands of years ago, an Aztec god of death fed on human sacrifice. Now he's back and he's worked up a big appetite. Haven't watched that one yet. Here's another one that I thought was just really stupid and silly. I had to get it. Let my puppets come. I think this is a kind of an adult type movie. Puppet puppetry and adult humor. Next one is called Liquid Sky. You're not gonna be able to see it because I have a plastic cover on it. But this has a cover where it uh, senses like heat from your fingers and it changes the color of the slip cover. So it would show like pink or, or red or something. I can't remember what it was, but you're not gonna be able to see it because I have this cover on here. This is called Liquid Sky from 1982. Look at how weird that looks. I think that's when D. Snyder was just a kid. I'm just kidding, that's not D. Snyder. The next one is called is this? The Lost Films of Herschel Gordon Lewis. Uh, you get Linda and Abilene, The Ecstasies of Women and Black Love. I had this in backwards. That's a pretty cool little cover there. Kind of a time capsule to the 60s and 70s. I like the colors on that. Here's Lucifer's Women. Another great cover. This one came out in 1974. You get some pretty good bonus materials here. Next one's called Luther the Geek. This is another trauma movie. About a crazy carny who bites the head off of chickens and stuff. Here's a good backwoods slasher called Madman. I think it's a very fun backwoods slasher. Don't say his name out loud. He'll hunt you down in the woods. Here's Malambimba. This is a non-sploitation. I got to be careful because there's depictions of nude nuns on there. Next one's called Malibu High. Another period piece. From the 70s. Here's another one I still haven't watched yet. This is called Master of the World. From what I understand, there's not much talking in this movie. That's what somebody said. I haven't watched it yet, so I can't speak on it. This one I really liked. I... I didn't know anything about this movie going into it. This is called The Massage Parlor Murders. And this is a, it's either a late 70s or early 80s slasher. But this was pretty well done. And I was glad that I got a chance to see it. I probably would have never heard about that one unless Vinegar Syndrome released it. Uh, the next one's called Mausoleum. I know this one sold out pretty quick uh, several years ago now. And this was going for a pretty penny, I think. This one came out in 1982. LaWanda Page is in here. She played uh, Aunt Esther in Sanford and Son. Pretty good movie. Here's another twin pack here. You get Murder Weapon. And you get Deadly Embrace. 
both of them. Both of these movies are Linnea Quigley movies, and they're both fun. Linnea Quigley's great. Here's Memorial Valley Massacre. I think this one is a... I, I watched this one. This one is, is a uh, Native American who's killing campers who, who go on his land. It's pretty good. Here's Mountaintop Motel Massacre. Eh, this one was, it was so-so. A killer uh, elderly woman who kills the, the uh, tenants, the people who, um, the guests who rent from her motel. Next one's called Mutant Hunt. I got this one really, really cheap. Looks like it has some pretty good 80s practical effects. The next one is called Necromancer, Demonic Forces from the Depths of Hell. And this one was limited to 4,000. I got number 3194. Here's a movie starring George, George Stover, who's another actor I really like a lot. This is called Night Beast. I really enjoy this movie. I like just about anything that George Stover does. And as you can see, it's a monster in a rubber suit. Pretty fun. Here's one that's pretty new to my collection. This one's called Night Screams. I haven't had a chance to watch it, watch it yet, but it's and the cover looks awesome. And it is a slasher movie, so I enjoy those. Here's another movie with Linnea Quigley called Nightmare Sisters. Here's another one I haven't watched yet. This is called Old Dracula. This is another one that kind of hung around on the Vinegar Syndrome website for a long time before the slipcover finally sold out. This one's called Olivia. Uh, I believe the alternate title to this one was called Prozzi in, uh, in Europe. I think that's, I, I didn't know what Prozzi meant. We don't use that word here in, in the US. But somebody told me, or I think I heard somebody say it in one of their videos a long time ago, that Prozzi is just a, a nickname for a prostitute. I believe that's what it was. Next one is called Nightmare Weekend. This one has kind of a kind of a gimmicky slipcover. It has that sphere with it's supposed to be like a kind of a mirror effect, a foil effect. It's not really showing that well because I do have a plastic case on it. This one's called Night Owl. To me, that looked like Tobey Maguire, but it's not him. Next one's called Night Train to Terror. I like this one a lot. This was one of their early releases from Vinegar Syndrome. It's pretty good music in here. It, it's kind of corny, but it's, it's fun 80s rock and roll type music. Next one's called Nothing Underneath. I believe uh, somebody told me that this lady here who plays in the movie, she was a a supermodel in the um, in the Netherlands, I believe it was. I don't remember her name offhand. But she almost kind of looks like Kelly LeBrock to me, but it's not her. It's a, it's, I believe it's a Dutch uh, actress. Uh, it was also called Too Beautiful to Die, I think. Unless there's two movies on that one, I don't recall. Next one is an Ed Wood movie called Orgy of the Dead. I think it's a story by Ed Wood, but it was directed by uh, A.C. Stephan. It, it was written by Ed Wood. Come on. Come on. Don't fail me now. We're halfway through the video. What in the... How can this phone be so ridiculous? 1965. Anyway, there's Ed Wood and A.C. Stephan. There's no reason. Next one's called Pandemonium. This one has uh, Judge Reinhold. This, this one has a pretty weird cast to it. You can see Judge Reinhold back there. Paul Rubens. Who played Pee Wee. Party Line. And the last one for shelf four 
It's called The Passing. So we're gonna pause it here and we're gonna keep rolling on to shelf number five. Okay, I went and got myself a chair so I can, I don't like crouching down, my back gets sore and I crouch too much. So I wanted to make myself comfortable and I don't wanna have to rush. So we're just gonna go through this now at a casual, relaxing pace. Next one is called Penitentiary and Penitentiary 2. And these are pretty good movies. There's a lot of really good action. These are prison boxing movies. They're very well done. I enjoy these. All right. The next one is called Perfect Strangers with uh, Belki Bartakamus and Kosen Larry. And it's, I'm just kidding, it's not that. Although I did love that show. Perfect Strangers was pretty funny. Bronson Pinchot was, was a comedic genius. Next one's called Pets. Kind of a girl in, girls in prison, girls in chains type movie. This one's called Pigs. Um, this is a documentary about Hillary Clinton and uh, Nancy Pelosi. I had to pause it for a second because my dog was trying to take toys out of her box over there and she was being really loud about it, but I don't want to, you can take it out of there. I don't want to be mean to the dog. She wants to play, she's bored. Next one's called Play Dead. Uh, this one I still have to watch. I don't think this is the one where the dog is a robot. I think that was called Man's Best Friend with Lance Henriksen. Uh, I think this is just a, a straight up killer dog movie. Next one's called Psychic Killer. I thought this one was pretty good. This was one of their early releases for Vinegar Syndrome which at the time was released without a slipcover, and then a long time later they issued a slipcover that you can buy. Next one's called Psycho Cop Returns. And I, I didn't know that there was even a Psycho Cop one, but somebody commented in one of my previous videos and said that there was a Psycho Cop one, but it wasn't released by Vinegar Syndrome. Next one's called Punk Vacation. Here's one that I really enjoyed. This was really wacky. I, I recommend this one a lot. This is definitely a B movie that would, you would see in a drive-in. It's called Raw Force. It has a little bit of everything. It has gorgeous women. It has action. It has gunfights. It has zombies. It has samurais caged women has anything you can think of in this movie it's just crazy it's very very entertaining here's a russian action movie called red mob is this russian yes this is russian russia 1982 and this movie came out in 1992 so it takes place in 92 because that's when it was released. Next one's called Rest in Pieces. Here's a Seven ripoff. This, this movie Seven with Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. Uh, this is called Resurrection with Christopher Lambert. And this is uh, in the same vein as Seven very very similar here's another box set that i really like this is called rudy ray moore uh the films of rudy ray moore you get dolomite the human tornado pd wheatstraw and disco godfather this is a beautiful box set great black exploitation movies i enjoy them a lot 
Next one's called Rush Week. It's another college campus killer movie. I liked it. Satan's Blood. Filmed by Carlos Puerto. Carlos Puerto. He make a movie called Satan's Blood. And then we have Satan's Slave. We don't have no tequila. We only have beer. Next one is the Scanner Cop box set. And this has Scanner Cop 1. And you guessed it. Scanner, Scanner Cop 2, the showdown. These are a little bit dusty. I'm a little bit embarrassed. Next one's called Scared to Death. Klaus Kinski in Schizoid. And Barbie Benton in X-Ray. You got a double bill. Next one is called Secta Siniestra. Demon Baby. This one's called The Severed Arm. This was a pretty crazy movie. I liked it. I also like this one. It's called Shallow Grave. It was, uh, I can't remember if it was three or four young ladies who got expelled from a college class and the, the dean, whatever her name was, the chancellor, I don't know, I can't remember told these four girls that they were expelled from school, I believe for a week, and then they can come back. So they wanted to take kind of a crossroad trip in this week and then come back. And uh, so while they're out on this trek and this little uh, getaway, they see something that they shouldn't see and they get hunted for it. I'm not gonna give any more away than that. I don't wanna say what they saw or who, who they saw doing it. But uh, I recommend that one. I think it's a good, it's a good movie. Here's a Bigfoot movie called Shriek of the Mutilated. It, it, this one is not good, but it's not bad either. I would give this, I would give this a, hmm, I'll say 4.5 out of 10. It's not quite a five out of 10. It's, it could have been improved upon. It was not that good, but. I don't know if I'd watch it again anytime soon. This one's called Silent Madness. And this was pretty good. It was about a escaped mental patient. He wasn't actually, he didn't actually escape. He was released on accident. He had the same name as a another inmate that was supposed to be released. And they let the wrong guy out. A guy that they were never going to let out. He was like a lifer at this uh, mental ward or asylum, whatever you want to call it. But they accidentally let him out, and so he goes back to his ways of killing. I thought it was pretty good. Next one's called Sister, Sister. There's uh, Eric Stoltz and Jennifer Jason Lee in the movie. I think that's from the early 90s. This one's called The Six-String Samurai. Another kind of a weird one. There's a lot of different things going on for it. I'll, I'll probably take that in the other room and show you guys. Uh, here's Slaughterhouse. This is about, uh, it's another slasher movie. It's kind of like, it's kind of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff, but it's not even anywhere close to the TCM movie. But it's about a farmer who has a uh, slaughterhouse of pigs and the the local law enforcement want to shut him down. They want to, I think they wanted to build something on his land or something. And the elderly farmer, he was uh, sticking to his guns. He wanted to keep his land. And he has a, um, I have to be careful what I say. He has a son with a low IQ. We'll just say it that way. A big grown, I mean, a big burly grown son with the mind of probably a eight-year-old. 
and he doesn't like what the authorities are doing to his father to force him off the land, and he takes matters into his own hand. Uh, his name was Buddy in the movie, and uh, he goes on a little rampage. Next one's called Spookies. This one was pretty good, too. This one, I believe, it's been a while since I watched it, but if, if I'm not mistaken, there was two kids. I think it was right around Halloween. Uh, they were trying to work up the courage to break into this big mansion that they thought was abandoned, but they find out that there's some weird things going on inside that they didn't bargain for. Next one's called Splatter University. Another slasher campus movie. Spellcaster. This one was limited to... Get some of that dust off of there. This one was limited to 4,000. I got number 2,006. Here's another ridiculous movie. This one's called The Suckling. And um, this one... It's been a while since I saw this one too, but if I remember, it was about a, a young lady who was pregnant and she doesn't want the baby and she she flushes it. She, she gives birth to the baby on the toilet and flushes it and it goes into the sewer and this baby turns into a flesh-eating monster when it's in the sewers. I thought this one was excellent. This one was called Sudden Fury. This is another case of a movie that I had no idea existed. I've never seen it or heard of it until Vinegar Syndrome put it out. I bought it and I watched it and I was really impressed with this. That doesn't happen too much to me where I, you know, I go into a movie blind and I'm like blown away, but this one was really good. Next one's called Sugar Cookies. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman from uh, Troma wrote this movie. It's a revenge type movie. Next one is called Tammy and the T-Rex. This is the one with the holographic lenticular. It doesn't really change the image, but it gives a kind of a 3D depth. You got Paul Walker and the uh, very lovely Denise Richards. Although I I, I kind of lost respect for Denise Richards when she started dating Charlie Sheen. Although I do like Charlie Sheen a lot. I think he's a great actor. I just think that he's probably soiled her now. And I, I Charlie Sheen's pretty gross to me, the way he treated women. And just to know that she was with him, I just... Ugh. And they uh, released a alternate slipcover, this kind of a comic book style cover. I'm not really crazy about these, to be honest. I don't really like these covers. I just wanted to get it for the collection. The next one is a movie based on the life of serial killer Ted Bundy. I believe that's another word that we can't use here on YouTube is serial killer. And um, out of 5,000, I got number 1926. And the last one for shelf five, I think we're on, right? This is called The Telephone Book. And this is another case of, uh, this was one of their first Blu-ray releases. It was released without a slipcover at the time. And then years later, they issued this slipcover, so I grabbed it. Obscene the phone call. All right, that's the end of Shelf 5. Let's go to 6. So uh, this is Shelf 6, and this is going to be the last shelf for my vinegar syndrome stuff. And then at the very bottom, in that little corner there, I have some of the vinegar syndrome partner label movies and we'll go through those really quick. I keep those with my vinegar syndrome stuff just because they're very, very similar in style to his, uh, the way that they are uh, released with excellent quality, nice slip covers and all that stuff. They're very, very similar to vinegar syndrome stuff. The first one is, this is another box that I really like. This is called the Televised Terror Box Set. So these are all movies that were released on television in the U.S. 
like in the 70s and 80s. And back then they had some really, really good made for TV movies. So you get Are You in the House Alone, Calendar Girl Murders, and Child in the Night. And uh, again, I'm going to keep buying these. I don't know if they have a volume two yet. I haven't checked in a while. But if they do, I'll get a volume two and three and so on until they stop making them. I think those are really, really good. The next one is called Terminal Island. Some good action here. Mad Dog Killers. Men and Women, Black and White, Taken from Death Row. Condemned to Devil's Island, where living is worse than dying. Kind of a last man standing, every man for himself type uh, battle royale. Okay, the next one is called Terror. It was buried a hundred years, but never laid to rest. I'm starting to get really tired. It was a long week. Don't worry, we're going to finish this. Although I think when I'm done with this shelf in that bottom little corner, I am going to end the video. I know I told you guys I was going to open up some of these boxes, but I'm just too tired tonight. I don't really want to make this any longer than it's going to be. But if there's something you guys want to see, let me know and maybe I'll do a future video on it. Otherwise, you can check some of my previous videos and you may see that unboxing. Here's another beautiful release from Vinegar Syndrome. I love this movie. I, I really love this release. This is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. So in this movie, Lefty is, um, he's supposed to be the uncle of Sally Hardesty from the first TCM 1974. I know that um, Dennis Hopper claimed that this was the mer uh, worst movie he was ever involved in and he never really wanted to talk about it, which is a shame because I thought he played a great role in this movie. He was a really good character. Dennis, uh, Dennis Hopper was a great actor. There's the alternate cover, which, oops, shoot, sorry about that. Uh, that's the original poster art and it's supposed to kind of it's kind of a tribute or an homage to the breakfast club because that's what their photo looked like for the movie but uh, this is one of my favorite vinegar syndrome releases i really enjoy this this is great this one was pretty good too it's called there's nothing out there it's kind of a it's kind of an homage i think to the friday the 13th franchise pretty cool here's another this is another great release from vinegar syndrome this is the 4k release of ticks starring uh is it justin long um no seth uh seth green i think let me let me take this out here so that's what the cover looks like See if I can take this out without dropping it. So that's a beautiful cover. And that's what the ticks look like. Um, hold on a second, I'm gonna pause it. So there again is what the covers look like. This is a beautiful, beautiful release. This is one of their best. Jeez, man. I'm trying to make a relaxing, calming video and I'm dropping stuff everywhere. Sorry about that. Uh, this one has some really good bonus materials. So you have uh, Clint Howard is in the movie. Was I right about Seth Green? Uh, yeah, that's Seth Green right there. Look at that gory special effects. So that's Tix 4K. If you didn't grab this one, I recommend grabbing it. And we're going to keep moving on here. 
The next one is called The Undertaker. I believe this was Joe Spinell's last movie. If it wasn't his very last, it was definitely one of his last. And uh, if I remember right, I think they said he was very ill when, uh, when they were filming that movie. Next one is called Through the Fire. This one's called Uninvited. Horror Out at Sea. These are always fun movies. The next one is a, this is a British movie called Unmasked Part 25. And uh, they, they make fun of, or uh, I guess they kind of, they kind of roast the Friday the 13th uh, franchise and Jason <clears throat> you can tell even by the title they're they're kind of poking fun at the you know F13 franchise cuz they're calling it part 25 cuz Jason never dies and they keep making sequels i wish they would make more sequels actually the next one they make is going to be part 13 so that should be pretty uh pretty epic i hope Friday the 13th part 13 i, I hope they come up with something good for that if they ever do um, <clears throat> all in all, I thought this movie was pretty good, uh, but they really went out of their way to kind of make fun of the F-13 and Jason Voorhees. Here's another Spanish horror creature feature movie called uh, Vacation of Terror, Part 1 and 2. There's the American title, and that's the Spanish title. A little monster there, pretty cool monster in a rubber suit looks like a demon <clears throat> here's another one this is an excellent box set here i really like this it's called villages of the damned three horror three horror movies from spain comes in this nice thick box here you get a book and you get another slip cover on the inside three spanish gothic horror movies i love that set I love the Italian and the Spanish horror movies. Next one is called The Vineyard. So this is the one with James Hong when he has to keep drinking stuff to um, prolong his life. The other one, I can't remember which one I was talking about earlier, but I, I guess I got a little bit confused because this is the movie I was thinking of here. It stars James Hong. And uh, you'll be happy to know that James Hong is in his 90s, and he's still with us. I thought he was always fun. He was in a, he was in a million movies. Next one's called Wacko. Kind of a, kind of a um, pop culture comedy. A motion picture made by, for, and about people just like you. Here's another one I liked, <clears throat> but I do enjoy these kind of movies, so even if it's bad, I still find things in these movies that I enjoy. This is called Who Done It? Seven People Are Dead and You're Next. That was pretty good. Here's Witch Trap. That's a beautiful cover. And I do enjoy these witchcraft and warlock and evil magic type movies. That's a great cover. Here's another college campus slasher movie called Wolf Pack. This was limited to 5,000. I got number 2921. Here is a outer space sci-fi horror movie called Extro 3. The 
The next one's called Zombie Island Massacre, ultra low budget. Still pretty fun. I believe this was filmed in the Philippines. And if I remember right, <clears throat> they had locals that were working for dirt cheap in the film as extras and helping out and stuff. So that was the last of these slipcover editions. Now the rest of these are Blu-rays that don't have a slipcover and I have some DVDs. So the first one here is a double bill of Blood Mania and Point of Terror. I think eventually these will get slipcovers because little by little Vinegar Syndrome has been releasing slipcovers for some of their early stuff that never had them before. And if you notice any of these that already do have a slip, let me know because I got to track those down. <clears throat> Next one's called Candy Tangerine Man, and it also has a bonus movie called Lady Coco. Black exploitation movies. Now, this one does have a slipcover, and I do have it. I showed it earlier, but I have one also here that does not have a slipcover. I think this one was issued a slipcover. I just didn't get it. And this is another adult movie. I had no idea what it was when I was buying it. You can see there that it's it's uh, for adults. It's called Corruption. I had no idea that's what it was when I bought it. This one here is pretty rare. This is called Crypt of the Living Dead. You also get a bonus feature called House of the Living Dead. This one, I thought this one was numbered, but it must not be. Um, this one, I don't know if this one ever had a slipcover. I don't think it did, but if, if I'm wrong, let me know. This one's called Death Machines from 1976. The martial arts movie. Here's another one of those uh, prisoner. Every man for himself. If you if you survive, you can leave prison. It's called Death Row Game Show. So they have a, a very dangerous game show that they let inmates participate in. And like I said, if they can win the game, then they can be released. It's a movie from 1988. <clears throat> This one's called Hellbent, 1988. This is the same guy that directed Horror House on Highway 5. I don't know if that one had a slip or not. I don't think it did, but... Here's Horror House on Highway 5. So these are these movies are made by the same director. And Horror House <clears throat> on Highway 5 came out in 1985. Very, very low budget. It says it's one of the most confusing and compelling homemade horror movies ever made. This is the one I believe that was numbered. So this is a really rare one. You get the Jekyll and Hyde portfolio and you get a Clockwork Blue. And this one was limited to 1,000. I got 451. These are movies from the 70s, 1971 and 1972. Here's another one that has a slip cover and I showed you earlier. I just have an extra Blu-ray. <clears throat> this is Madman. Really good movie. This one also has a slipcover, and I showed you earlier. This is Massage Parlor Murders. Two disc combo pack. I don't know if this one had a 
uh, slipcover. You get Prime Evil and Lurkers. This was uh, directed by Roberta Findlay, who was, was known for her adult movie directing, but these are not uh, adult movies. And these movies are from 1987 and 1988. Here's another one. I think this one's also numbered. This is really rare. Runaway Nightmare. And this one was limited to 1,000. I got number 354. Movie from 1982. Trip with the Teacher. Thought this was pretty good. Nineteen <clears throat> seventy four. And I know this one has a slip cover. I have an extra one. This is the Amityville Horror four K. I have it with a slip, but I also have this extra. And now we're on to the DVDs. This was the Vinegar Syndrome catalog of film from spring of 2017. And you get a DVD, and it's a compilation DVD of the movies that they had previous, previously um, released in their catalog. And then you also get a thick kind of a catalog book to go through and read about the movies that they have released. This is a really cool edition. I really like this. This was really cheap on their website years ago in 2017, but this has become a collector's item now, and a lot of people that missed out on it early are, are hunting this down and paying a lot of money for it. Uh, so these are the DVDs, and they're in no order. I didn't alphabetize these. I just stacked them in this little corner here. The first one is called The Cutthroats. It says, As, uh, at the close of World War II, an elite squad of American soldiers infiltrates a remote Nazi outpost with the intention of stealing battle plans. This is from 1969. And this one is called Night of the Strangler. You see there that it has Mickey Dolenz from the, the Monkees fame. I believe he's the last monkey still alive. This one came out in 1972. So then we got a couple of these double bills. These are kind of like the drive-in movies. You get The Executioner Part 2 and Frozen Scream. Revenge of the Virgins and Teenage Zombies. In Search of Bigfoot and Cry Wilderness. And the last one, I believe this has a Blu-ray release now. I don't have it yet. Sometimes Aunt Martha does dreadful things. 1971. This movie was pretty bad. So that was it for the DVDs. Now I'm going to just kind of pull down here. And these are Blu-rays from the partner labels of Vinegar Syndrome. So let me see if I can just kind of stack these here without making a lot of noise. Uh, the first one here is called Blood Arama Triple Frightmare. So I'm gonna take this out really quick. So there's the cover again. And here's what the movie looks like. So 
So you get Help Me, I'm Possessed, Night of the Strangler, and Carnival of Blood. And the movies are from 1974, 72, and 70, respectfully. You can see some of the practical effects there. And that's what it looks like. The next one is called The Boarding House. It was directed by that dude right there and his real life wife who is also co-starring in this movie with him. I forget his name. And I have this in a bag, so or a, a plastic case. I'm not going to open it up. But that guy right there, he was the, the lead actor in this movie. He was also the director. Um, I know some people said that they really liked this movie, but I, I didn't really care for this movie at all. I didn't really like it. I'm just being honest. I didn't really, it wasn't my thing, but some people like it and that's fine. This one's called The Monster of Camp Sunshine. I like this slip cover. It's, uh, it looks like it's kind of an, um, advertisement in a comic book where you can get these kind of uh, these cheap gimmick toys and stuff like that I like the way that that looks and the next one is a slasher movie oops upside down called Night Ripper low budget slasher from the I think it was the early 80s and we have a couple of these this is the WNUF Halloween special with the slip cover I talked about this one a lot on my channel already uh, not gonna say too much more about it but this is one I definitely recommend to you guys if you didn't get it already at least uh, consider grabbing that one see if you can get it and then this one is also the same exact movie. It just has a alternate slip cover. So these are the same movie here. And the last one for the video is called Video Violence, the Snuff Collection, Volume 1 and 2, or Part 1 and 2. And uh, these are all like gory movies that were shot on video, and these are all like ultra low budget from the 80s but uh, i'm glad to have this one it's a nice little collector's piece so that will do it that was my entire vinegar syndrome collection hope i gave you guys some ideas and yeah i, I know i'm not i don't really drink soda that much anymore but i did buy a six pack of cherry coke today and I went in there hoping, my favorite soda of all time is vanilla Coke, but they didn't have it. And I, I felt like a Coke today. I just wanted to have a Coke and I grabbed a cherry. But I hope I was able to give you guys some suggestions. Um, feel free to please leave a comment below and let me know what you would recommend. I know that there's a lot I'm missing. I'm never gonna be a completist for this label just because there's so many of them and they're so expensive. But there's definitely a list I have of, of titles that I want. But if you think I'm missing something I should grab, let me know. It's probably something I have on my list already. But if I don't, I'll add it to it. And that'll be it. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Later.